All right, everybody, uh, welcome to Council. So we've been off uh, all summer for the most of it. I think we had a meeting in August, so we'll have to uh, retrain us as we uh, get back into uh, full swing of the uh, fall and winter. Uh, so Rogers is um, uh, broadcasting this tonight, but unfortunately lost the audio. So uh, people either have to read lips or Council, you have to speak slowly and really enunciate clearly. Uh, but for those, uh, I guess I can't even send that message out. I tell them on Rogers to actually watch us live streaming, but unless they can read lips, they won't figure that one out either. So anyways, uh, early, early fall hic hiccup for us. Uh, council, if you can join me in the Council commitment, please. We are grateful for the many gifts which have been bestowed on Penetanguishene and its citizens, including the gifts of freedom, opportunity, and peace that we enjoy. May we be worthy custodians of all that has been entrusted to us. We ask that all in attendance and those who cannot be here to assist us in promoting good government. May our decisions as members of Council be enlightened, and may we all be strengthened in our awareness of our duties and responsibilities. May we be granted the wisdom, knowledge, will, and understanding to preserve the good fortune of the town for the benefit of all to make good laws and wise decisions. Thank you all for attending. Moving on to agenda item number three. It's moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Saunders, that the agenda of the regular Council meeting of September 13th, 2017 be approved as presented. Council, any comments on tonight's agenda in front of us? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Then all in favour? And that is carried and the agenda is approved. Item number four is declaration of pecuniary interest. Does any member of council have a pecuniary interest in tonight's session? Seeing none at this time, if you find yourself in that position as we move along, let me know and we'll address it appropriately. Moving on to uh, agenda item number five, uh, we have de delegations and deputations and we do have one tonight from uh, uh, Karen Mealing with uh, updating us on the uh, 150 mural project. So Karen, welcome. Good evening, Mayor Marshall and members of Council. Thank you for the opportunity to provide you with a final update on the North Simcoe Canada 150 mural project. This was the largest community pro art project that Quest Art has ever undertaken, and it would not have been accomplished or achieved without the support of our local municipalities and our community. This project was funded with a grant from the Government of Canada's Canada 150 Fund, a grant from the County of Simcoe, in-kind contributions from all four municipalities, so Penetanguishene, Midland, Tay and Tiny, a donation of paint from Trips Paint, and a donation of services from LaFontaine Ironworks. When I first heard of the Canada 150 Fund, I was thinking about what kind of community project could we do, and I started thinking, oh, we'll do a mural in Midland. But then I realized we don't just serve Midland. We always we serve North Simcoe, even when we started in Penetanguishene 20-something years ago. We've always serviced North Simcoe and beyond. So it really made sense for it to be a true North Simcoe project. And the murals needed to reflect the community and involve the community in their creation. When I was chatting with muralist Ruth Hurdle, who became our project coordinator, and she's here with me this evening, um, she suggested we add an interactive component to the murals so people could look at the murals and via their mobile devices, watch a short video about the murals. So if you go to see the mural down at the waterfront and you see the partner plaque, you'll be able to see a link that you can enter into your, your phone and you'll be able to go watch a short video in both official languages. The French versions aren't on the website yet. They've just been translated. They'll be up shortly. Um, so then when I brought in videographer, photographer Mar Rodrigo Moreno to talk about the video, he said, why don't we make a 20-minute documentary about the project? So you can see that at the very beginning of, the project, of this project, it was truly um, a lot of input from community members and uh, a lot of support. So the creation of the murals came from suggestions from community members. We held community input nights, you can see them documented here, and people could come in and share what they thought was important, what they wanted to see represented in their mural. And we also set up an email address so those who could not attend our nights uh, could certainly share their ideas. And we also had suggestions coming in through social media. And we received a lot of input, and it was really interesting to hear what people said and to hear their stories. And Ruth and I learned a lot about North Simcoe during these sessions. After these sessions, Ruth did more research. She, she went to work finding reference images, and some people gave her photos and books, etc. And she compiled everything to create a well-designed mural. And we did this four times. You can see her, this is the Town of Midland mural in the design concept stages. So you can see how she was working, how she's planning it out. And when you look at the finished Midland mural, you'll see the, uh, the end result. 
and to note that because we are a trilingual, sorry, a tricultural community, we did speak with both the Indigenous and Francophone communities to ensure their participation and input. Once we had the designs, the community was invited to come in and paint. We held open community painting days. So you can see here we had everyone, children, adults, seniors participating. Uh, the Penetanguishing mural was actually painted in, at, down at the Penetanguishing Centennial Museum and Archives in the uh, little fire hall there. And I think one day we had residents from Bayfield House come over and with their walkers and we talked to them about the project, which was really nice to have happen. We also engaged local grade seven and eight students to paint the floating leaves that you'll find on each mural. Each mural has 13 leaves and they rep represent the provinces and territories. And the students were able to des design their own leaf. They could choose what was important to them about their community, what they thought was important about being Canadian, so they designed them. And we've been asked how we selected the schools. So we selected them by using the four main school boards that serve our area. In Midland, we chose from Bayview as an English public school. Uh, for English Catholic, we chose St. Antoine Daniel in, La in Victoria Harbor. In Penetanguishene, we worked with Le Caron, French public. And in La Fontaine, we worked with St. Croix, French Catholic. The project, oh sorry, the project had more than 675 volunteer hours and 186 painters. Plus our project coordinator put in more than 600 hours and our project assistant, Lois Green, put in 200 hours. The total project budget was approximately $100,000, including in-kind donations. This included all the materials, supplies, staff hours, administration, translation, videos, documentary. And finally, it was time to unveil the murals. This here is the Tay mural. We unveiled it on June 24th as part of their Canada Day celebrations. It's located along the Tay Shore Trail in Victoria Harbor. And then on Canada Day, we unveiled the Town of Midland mural. It's located at the North Simcoe Sports and Recreation Center. And later that afternoon, we unveiled the Town of Penetanguishene mural. It's located near the CNR Park, and I hope you've all had a chance to see it as you've gone to walk on the Rotary Trail or even driven down Main Street. And the Township of Tiny's one is unvi sorry, was unveiled on July the 15th. It's located at the Robert, Robert Tide Pavilion in LaFontaine. And we need to thank Festive Azulu for allowing us to be part of their celebrations. Um, they were very gracious in letting us unveil our mural that day as part of their day. Now you can find the link to the two minute videos um, on our website. And the, the documentary is still being finalized, but I will certainly let you know when we're doing a screening of that, if you'd like to come out and watch. It was a pleasure to work with each municipality, including your councils and staff on this project. The support and cooperation we received was superb, and we hope we can find ways to partner in the future. We have been before you in the past, asking for financial support, and while we want to keep that conversation going, that's not what tonight's presentation is about. It's about celebrating a wonderful legacy project that we all created together. We hope you are pleased with your murals and that local residents and visitors are able to enjoy them for years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Great job on that. I was there for that unveiling. It was nicely done. Ruth, great work. Uh, Council, any questions or comments for Karen? I have one. I said, why does that uh, Penetang King look suspiciously like our CAO? <laughs> That's a question for <laughs> And me. how long did he pose for it? <laughs> no, it was very well done. I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, okay. was great. So I, I guess one of the questions I get up, Karen, is the uh, black molding on the side. I guess the post, uh, what are we doing about that? Or is there something we can help you with or next steps yeah. on that? I, I do get asked that sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so the plan is that uh, we'll get something permanent there. Okay, because it does come up. It's beautiful, and people said yeah. it's detracting from the beauty of your yes, work. So it is. <laughs> I think our rec chair has a comment here. Uh, actually, not a comment, Your Worship. Thank you. It's uh, more question: is is will the mural require some kind of protection through the winter months, or can it stay as it is? Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Nice to see you again. Thanks so much.
Council, the next item in front of us is a public meeting, and the first one is on uh, Corbo Crescent and Jennings Drive. So I'll just kind of read the rules of engagement here for everybody. So this is a public meeting under the Planning Act to consider an application to amend the town's zoning bylaw. And for Council, the purpose of the public meeting is not to engage in a debate regarding the merits of the application, nor is it intended to be a question and answer session. It is to provide an opportunity for the public to make comments or for Council members to ask clarifying questions. For our public, uh, this is your opportunity to speak and we encourage you to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. We encourage you to do so. In accordance with the Planning Act, if a person does not make an oral submission at the public meeting or make written submissions before the bylaw is passed or an approval given, you will not be entitled to appeal the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board and you may not be added as a party to a hearing on appeal of the OMB unless, in the opinion of the Board, there are reasonable grounds to do so. At this point in time, I'd ask our uh, Planning Director, Andrew Betty, to introduce this uh, a topic for us, please. Thank you very much, Your, uh, Your Worship and members of Council. Um, the first uh, item is the public meeting for Corbo Crescent and Jennings Drive. I can con confirm that notice of the public meeting was given on August 17th. Uh, it was provided to the residents subject to the amendment as well as uh, residents within 120 meters of the subject property as well it was also within the uh, that addition of the Midland Mirror. To date we've received correspondence uh, that was included as part of your package from the Simcoe, Muskoka, or Simcoe County District School Board mm -hmm. as well as there were three um, submissions that were received after the publishing of the agenda so you have been provided them on desk. Uh, there was an email received today from Justin and Jillian Legros from 7 Jennings Drive. Um, sorry, as well as a petition that was also uh, signed by about 30 residents of the neighborhood. Um, so you should have received those in, on desk as well tonight. I have a quick presentation just to give an overview of the application itself. So this was a town-initiated amendment to, our town, uh, to the zoning bylaw. It started as a result of um, recognition that there was a building permit that the town had issued in error for one of the properties uh, subject in the subject lands to permit the addition or renovation of the building to have a secondary suite within it. <coughs> um, through that uh, revelation at the planning department, um, we considered how the best to manage and address what had been done through the issuance of a building permit and presented to council back in the late fall of last year a municipal amendment to examine how permissions for second units and or uh, full second dwelling units in these subject lands could occur given the current standards of our zoning bylaw. Um, so that's where we stand today. I would note that we uh, held a public consultation session back in January in which uh, we recognized or alerted the property owners that uh, second units and or duplexing of their semi-detached dwelling was not a permission afforded under the current uh, official plan or the zoning bylaw and that we wanted to initiate that discussion about should we and if we did what could that look like. So we did have uh, two residents attend that meeting as well as uh, we had one person phone in after the fact. So as a little bit of history, uh, Jennings Drive is a through street between Thompson Road and Edwards Street and Corbo is a crescent off uh, that uh, thoroughfare. There are, are some properties that are developed as semi-detached dwellings as well as some of the surrounding neighborhood is a single detached neighborhood. So really the purpose of this is, is to hear from the public uh, about what their concerns or comments are with respect to the proposed amendment. Uh, the rec there's a report coming up later in the report um, that speaks to a staff recommendation that uh, staff be directed to prepare any comments and a recommendation to council at the next uh, committee of the whole meeting after hearing the concerns and, and comments received from the public tonight. Hey Andy, before I turn it over to the public, so we've got two topics and so one is the second suites and one is the um, uh, building permit in error. So council really is deliberating two separate topics that we need to um, kind of get our minds around. Do I have that correctly? N not at this time, Your Worship. Um, so the, the initial um, concept came up because of the recognition that there was a permit issued in error. However, examining the whole uh, community and neighborhood there, um, trying to understand what other property owners could do on, in their semi-detached dwellings um, brought forward a recommendation that we consider a full amendment for all the semi-detached units. Okay, thank you for that. 
So uh, I'll ask any member of uh, the public if they wish to uh, speak to council for either for or against this, uh, uh, this zoning change. And if you do, if I could ask you to come to the microphone, introduce yourself and, and your address, please, for the official record, please. First of all, I'm not as uh, uh, not ready to do this, but hey, I'm the one who brought in the petition. I went and got around and got uh, signatures from uh, both Jennings and Corbo Crescent. My name's Dan Cozy. I live uh, currently at 25 Corbo Crescent. I also have a dwelling, uh, semi-detached, at 28 Corbo Crescent. And I'm completely opposed to uh, the semi-detaching of any semi-detached home or uh, duplexing of any semi-detached homes. Now, the picture that was, I guess it was, uh, you know, from the satellite or whatever, of the, if, if we could have that. Okay, uh, no, the other one, the one before that, sorry. Okay. Um, this doesn't depict any traffic problem we have on both Corbo and Jennings. I mean, there are absolutely so many cars on both these streets. I don't even know that could have been taken God knows when. I don't know when, but uh, it's just, just a tra traffic nightmare as it is right now. And, and, and if, if we see duplexing, like right now, there's people are parked on the street. There's plows are going around in the winter time. I just don't see duplexing as as an option here because it's just going to become a traffic nightmare, especially in the winter time. For plows going around cars, and then like last year, it, it actually happened last year with we had the thaw, the freeze, the thaw, the freeze. So you had all these ice chunks all over the place, and people were uh, taking out shocks and God knows what on their cars from going over these chunks of ice because people parked on the road and it, it, it's I just don't see this uh, being the right thing to do not to mention uh, with all that traffic and everything else on there it's, there's already a speeding problem on Jennings people coming from uh, Thompson's Road over to get to the school onto Edward and then going to the school and there's police sitting there all the time watching for people going through the stop sign on Edward. And the speeding that goes up and down there is just, well, I see it all the time, especially on Corbo. Jennings is just as bad, if not worse. Um, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's probably already illegal duplexes on Jennings, I don't know about Corbeau. I've, I heard there was some on Jennings. If anything should be done here, there's already people living, obviously, in the basement of a of a duplex or of a, of a semi-detached home that's already been illegally duplexed. I don't know if there has been. I just heard there was. Uh, when those people move out, uh, that's it. No more duplex. But the duplex of semi is, I don't know, I, to me is just not the right way to go. Not for my street anyway. It's become a very quiet street. Corbeau is an excellent street. I'm glad I live on it. I'm proud mm -hmm. to live on it. And I really don't, I wouldn't even duplex my semi tash that I own at 28. That's it. That's all I got to say, and I'm opposed to it, and so is everybody on this list. Thank you very much for those comments. Does anyone else from the public wish to address council on this uh, topic? Okay, seeing none, I'll ask council if they have any uh, questions for our planner on clarification questions. Seeing none, thank you very much. We'll move on to the um, second item, which is the removal of the holding H symbol at 90 MacArthur Drive. And again, I'll ask our planner to uh, introduce this topic for us, please. Uh, thank you very much, Your Worship, members of Council. This is uh, one of those technical rezoning applications whereby uh, an application was submitted to the town 
uh, requesting permission to remove the holding symbol so that uh, the property owner can install a septic system and uh, do some renovations to his dwelling. So the property is at 90 MacArthur Drive. Um, it, the notice was given, um, sorry, I don't have the exact date, the end of August. With respect to the removal of the holding symbol, we have not received any correspondence from any neighbors and or agencies. I can confirm, but the provisions for the removal of the holding symbol have been met. They're set out in our official plan, and they have uh, been confirmed by the chief building official that the site itself can support a septic system. I would note in this case, um, it's not... There is no septic system for the current seasonal cottage on the property. It is an outdoor privy, so uh, permission for a septic system would be a benefit. Thank you. And again, any members of the public wish to speak for or against this particular application? Okay, seeing none from the public, does any member of council have a clarification question of our planner in this particular one? Okay, seeing no further comments, then I thank everyone for their attendance and uh, participation. The council will consider the application and the results of the public meeting uh, later on in tonight's agenda, so it'll come up uh, very shortly. Moving on to agenda item number seven, uh, seven eight. It's moved by the deputy mayor. Sorry, it's moved by Councillor Saunders, seconded by the deputy mayor, that the following minutes of the council meetings be confirmed and adopted as circulated. And those are the minutes from Special Council July 19, 2017, and Special Council August 11, 2017. Uh, any comments or questions, errors or omissions noted on these minutes? Uh, seeing no hands up, then I'll call for the vote. All in favor? And those are carried and adopted. Agenda item number eight is the consent agenda, and we have no items under consent this evening, so we'll move on to presentation and considerations of report from special committees. And the first one is the um, uh, zoning bylaw amendment. As moved by Councillor Lauder, second by Councillor Levy, that this report be received for discussion and that staff be directed to prepare a report for the next Committee of the Whole to address any comments received at the public meeting. Councillor Lauder, would you uh, care to speak to this, please? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, we just had a, a, a very interesting public meeting, and I'm, I'm glad to see a lot of people out to show their support. I'd like to pass this on to uh, our director to uh, add some comments, please. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Lauder. Um, the intent behind the recommendation is that there would be a follow-up report that we would delve into some of the matters that were raised tonight, so some of the parking questions and the traffic questions uh, that the public has brought forward. I, I would appreciate some time to prepare and, and provide a report to counselling on those comments. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, any other comments or questions on this? Uh, Councillor LaRose, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Just one. Uh, I had mentioned it way back when Andrea brought this forward before, and it was a parking issue. If you, if you look at the properties there that are duplexes now, uh, good chance you're going to have two to four cars. If you duplex them, you're going to have eight cars on each side of a duplex. There's just, in my mind, no possible room to, to accommodate that traffic and the parking within the uh, properties that are there. So are you speaking for or against the recommendation for a staff report? Sorry. Oh, I'm not even interested in the staff report. So against the staff <laughs> report, just getting clarification. Thank you for that. Councillor Levy, please. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I appreciate what Councillor LaRose is saying, and I'm sure uh, uh, many of us have uh, the same concerns. However, uh, uh, staff has asked for uh, time to uh, uh, do a more in-depth report on this, so we're very clear on... Uh, on what the situation really is on the ground up there. So I think that uh, there's no harm in uh, permitting that report to come forward in uh, next month. Okay, thank you for those comments. Any other comments before I call for the vote? Then, Councillor, or Deputy Mayor, please. Don't forget your microphone. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wondered too, I guess in the report, Andrea, where is uh, the legislation in intensification and all those things that are coming down from the province. I'm sure you will comment on that as well. Yes, thank you very much uh, uh, through your worship to the Deputy Mayor. Um, you may recall that uh, several years ago the province did release a new piece of legislation uh, with respect to affordable housing and um, then the, the growth plan also discusses intensification itself. So there is some upper tier and provincial legislation which is encourages uh, intensity or den density 
increases in developments. I'm not saying it's always appropriate. I will say that the legislation leaves it flexible for the municipality to consider and apply performance standards when they are allowing um, intensification. So I will address that in, in the follow-up report. Thank you. No other hands up then. I'll call for vote. All in favor of the staff report? Opposed? And that is carried. And so for our guests, that will come up two weeks from tonight. And moving on to 9B, it's moved by Councillor Levy, second by Councillor Lauder, that the zoning bylaw amendment to remove the holding H symbol for the property municipally known as 90 MacArthur Drive be approved. We've heard from the planner on this. Uh, Councillor Levy, do you have any comments before we open the floor to None Council? None at all. Council, any other final questions for either Debbie or our director? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Okay, and we're moving on to agenda item number 10, uh, notice of motions. Motions of which notice has been previously given. We have none. Notice of motion. Does any member of council have a notice of motion to bring forward in tonight's meeting? Seeing none, we'll go to consideration of bylaws. And it's moved by the deputy mayor. This is item number 12. Uh, moved by the deputy mayor, second by Councilor Saunders, that the council of the town of Penetanguishing introduced the following bylaw, 2017-60 and that the bylaw be read a first time, deemed to be read a second time, a third time, and carried. Any comments on the bylaw we were just about to pass? So, the Deputy Mayor, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Perhaps you should say what the bylaw is for the benefit of the audience. Sure, please go ahead. Thank you. No, I asked, I asked you to. You want me to do it? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> 2716, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 2000-02 as amended of the Corporation of the Town of Penetanguishene to remove the H symbol from 90 MacArthur Drive, that the Council of the Town of Penetanguishene introduced the following bylaw, 2017-60, and that that bylaw be read a first time, deemed to be read a second time, a third time, and carried. So everybody's okay with that? That's for the holding H. Alrighty, all in favor of that motion? And that is carried. And we're off to uh, uh, items number 13, questions from the media. Any questions, Andrew? Any questions from the public in tonight's uh, session? Seeing none, announcements, inquiries. Council, any member of council have an announcement or inquiry to share with us tonight? Seeing none, we'll go to the confirmatory bylaw. Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Saunders, that the confirmation bylaw 2017 58 be signed, sealed by the Mayor and the Clerk. All in favor of that? And that is carried. And council is adjourned at, I think it's 7 28 p.m. And we'll go right into a Committee of the Whole. And I'll call us to order for the Committee of the Whole. And the first item in front of us, I'll need a mover and seconder to approve uh, tonight's agenda. Mover and seconder, get this on the table, please. Councillor LaRue, Councillor Rawson. Any comments, questions on tonight's agenda? Okay. You good, Doug? Question or? Sorry, Doug. I'm just going to see if we can do planning first. I think there's a young gentleman to speak to an article on planning. So we'll move planning before T&E tonight. Yeah, Council, fine if we go to planning uh, out of the gate. Sure. We can do that for you, Councillor. Already all in favor of tonight's agenda? And then it's approved the adjustment of the planning section going first. Does any member of council have a pecuniary interest in tonight's session? Seeing none, if you find yourself in that spot as we move along, let me know and we'll address it appropriately. And we'll move on to section seven, which is planning and community development services. And I'll turn the chair over to Councillor Levy, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Marshall. First up is the consent agenda, the uh, sustainable sovereign sound uh, minutes, uh, animal control report, uh, correspondence regarding uh, the owning of chickens, and uh, uh, economic development EDO report. Committee of adjustment minutes. Does anyone want to uh, pulse any of these items out of the consent agenda? The one uh, in reference to the chickens. Okay, the Deputy Mayor would like to uh, address the issue of chickens. Oh, before I do that, we'll, I'll ask for a mover and a seconder for the remaining. Council Ross and Mayor Marshall, all in favor? Those are carried. And uh, Deputy Mayor, if you would. Thank you. Um, Councillor Levy, uh, yes, that uh, seems to be a going concern in municipalities these days. There's a young man in the audience that I met the other day and uh, I believe he does wants to speak. Is that allowable at this moment? 
Uh, certainly, I would ask uh, Council's permission to permit the young man to speak on backyard chickens. All in favor? Indeed. Young man, could you please take the uh, podium along with maybe one of your parents and you can tell us what your name is and if you like chickens or don't like chickens. are too noisy. Aurelia has a pie pilot project that oh, allows chickens, but you have to pay a hundred dollars for the license and I think that is fair. They also have a rule of eight feet from coop to pro property line, and the coop must be cleaned every day, and I promise to do that. Chickens will help me learn responsibilities and I can learn where my food comes from. Having chickens is good for the environment because they eat bugs and food scraps so no waste. The eggs are better for me as I can feed them organic feed and it will make me big and strong. Thank you for your time. I have a hand out of Aurelia rules for chickens so you can see that what they are doing. Do you have any questions? Thank you very, very much, Connor. How old are you, dear? Seven and a half. Thank you. That half is very important. Thank you so much. I would uh, just ask one question, and that is some of the pilot projects that I've seen, and I've been following this issue for years, and I've been waiting for people to, to raise it in Penetanguishing, so thank you for raising the mm -hmm. issue. Um, some of the pilot projects limit it to four, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know what your opinion on that would be. We just put six, because that's what he asked for, but Aurelia has the uh, four chickens as well. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connor. Council? Thank you, Connor, if I may. Thank you. That was very well done. Uh, perhaps a, a future politician. I think he's got some of his great great grandpa in him. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Council. Did uh, anybody feel the need for any discussion at this point, or will we ask? Um, a second I've lost my screen here shall we ask staff to uh, prepare a report for us on chickens in Penetanguishene is there a motion here Mayor Marshall no but since I asked for it uh, to be pulled mm -hmm. I would concur with that we should ask staff to do some groundwork and uh, perhaps get some policies from other municipalities and have it come forward for discussion. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we need a motion or Mr. CAO? I think this would be a perfect opportunity to add it as a referral item to the uh, planning and development section at the end of the agenda, to add it as a referral item for the Director of Planning. 
We will do that. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay, so we've approved the consent agenda. We just have to move the uh, correspondences for information. Oh, okay. Uh, a mover on that. Mayor Marshall, seconded by Councillor Lauder. All in favor? And carried. Thank you very much. You will be hearing more about chickens. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on to matters for consideration. Uh, PD 1750 reuse of town boulevards recommended action that staff be directed to prepare a boulevard garden policy addressing improvements made to town boulevards by private property owners and that the traffic and parking bylaw be amended to reflect the garden reflect the use of town boulevards with, with attachments uh, D director Andrea Betty if you'd speak to this please Yes, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Levy. Uh, if you'll recall, this was as a result of a deputation that was made back in July from a property owner in the town whereby they had done some beautification and landscaping of uh, their front boulevards. At the time, uh, staff were uh, proceeding with enforcement under the traffic and parking bylaw, which states that uh, no person shall obstruct, encumber, or foul a highway, specifically by landscaping, planting, or trees or shrubbery. So as a result of that deputation, <coughs> staff were requested to bring back, <coughs> sorry, I apologize, a, a report on how council could consider allowing for uh, beautification items to remain on the town boulevard. So uh, staff took a look at it and went through a number of municipalities that you'll see in the staff report. Um, and note that we did say that this is becoming more of a trend in which municipalities are moving away from the historic prohibitions from any type of uh, use of the town boulevards to uh, some minimal improvements and uh, associated use by the neighboring property owners for landscaping, gardening, and so forth. Um, so through all of that review of other policies, uh, we've provided some options for consideration. The option that was read is the recommendation from staff that we proceed with an amendment to our traffic and highway parking bylaw and that we create a policy that would uh, address how the town would approve uh, landscaping or b boulevard gardens within the town's rights of way. There are other options for consideration. Uh, the one that's permitted currently under our um, traffic and highway parking is entering into an encroachment agreement with the landowner itself. Uh, other options include um, that no changes be made and that the owners uh, be requested to remove that uh, improvements itself. As I noted that there is a movement in recent years in the planning profession where um, the use of the municipal boulevards with limited beautification and landscaping um, is contributing to community development and uh, a sense of place and so um, through that I would like permission to explore how a policy could word and be allowed to have uh, landscaping down on the boulevard. I also just wish to note that uh, there are a number of occurrences across the municipality where this is happening with uh, either no approval or long-standing approval by the municipality for maintenance of the boulevard itself or improvements to the boulevard. So um, it's not a one-off situation. It's happening anyways. So um, that's why staff feel a recommendation to create a policy that would allow landowners to do this is, is the best course. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director Betty. I, I might add to that that when uh, we heard from uh, residents uh, who were dealing with this issue, we were very clear in our instructions at the time uh, to the planning director that uh, we would like to see them accommodate it and we would like to see them accommodate it with the least amount of hassle and uh, with uh, no or minimum cost. So uh, given that, I think uh, Option two, recommendation uh, that staff be directed to prepare a boulevard garden policy addressing improvements made to town boulevards by private property owners and that the traffic and parking bylaw be amended to reflect the boulevard garden policy. Uh, in this option, council would be able to, to approve a policy addressing boulevard gardens and that staff would enforce it without the need or expense of an encroachment agreement or without the need for future council approvals for Boulevard Gardens. Thank you very much for uh, providing that concise uh, recommendation. And I would just ask for comments, questions, 
Councilor Mayor Marshall. Okay. Thank you so money. much. So the simplest solution to the problem in front of us was actually the road's not a road, it's a driveway, so there's a better path forward here for, for the homeowner. I'd argue that we just transfer that property and make it a driveway, which it actually is. So this seems to me like we're you know, killing a mosquito with a sledgehammer, not sure why we're doing that. Because uh, we're just going to end up picking fights with many of our citizens who have, uh, you know, when they say the boulevard, we're not talking the sidewalk. We're, you're, you're describing between the curb or the edge of the road and, and the uh, water shut off, right? And we have tons, hundreds of our residents with shrubbery and plants and flowers that have been doing it for 100 years. So I, I, I have to admit I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to understand. I'm not connecting the dots here that maybe I should be. But this to me seems like we're, we're going to cause a big kerfuffle over something that's a non-event. Would you like to take that? <laughs> yes, so I, I would, <laughs> but you go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Levy. I'll try to be brief, but I, I do know that there are a number of uh, issues around town where Boulevard Gardens have been in, and the removal of them have been enforced under the Parking and Traffic Bylaw. Um, as you know, that we don't often um, enforce um, the, the Boulevard Gardens part of the parking and traffic bylaw unless we, it's complaint driven and so I can say although there's occurrences happening around town there are other instances where there are neighbors that are um, concerned and upset with what uh, private some private landowners have been doing on the boulevards itself that's why um, in the matter in the interest of um, creating a policy whereby everybody knows what rules they can they can do in this situation and, and the municipality gets to have a say as well uh, that at little cost or no cost to the residents, we can see that happen is why I, uh, my recommendation was to do a policy on it. I would just add that I com completely agree. This uh, actually will, re will rectify more, more uh, problems than it causes. I, I see that skepticism in your face, but uh, I fully support the director on this. Thank you. At, at the risk of muddying the water somewhat, I encourage you to remember that words such as improvement and beautification are very value-laden. And what's one person's beautification is another person's terrible addition to the situation. And I see, see ourselves being exposed to more and more of that kind of thing. There's a resident uh, locally who used to live in Niagara on the lake and uh, got in the middle of this very kind of situation and went to the CAO of uh, Niagara on the Lake and said, your bylaw allows for me to do what he was doing. And the uh, CAO said, well, no, you can't do it anyway. And it led to a long and protracted legal fight. And uh, I, I tend to agree with Mayor Marshall that uh, this comes across to me as a bit of a sledgehammer on a mosquito. And if, uh, if we can keep it uh, down to a mosquito swatter kind of size, I'd be very happy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Saunders. Any other comments? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Listen, I, I can understand that there are issues out there, but perhaps if we had um, a, a policy that would direct, it would be better than no rules and regs at all. I'm fully in support of this. I think we have to move away from being so sterile in what we can do and can't do. We talk about beautification of our communities, and this is another step towards that, as long as it's done within the proposed rules when they come to us. Thank you very much, Thank Deputy you. Mayor. Did I hear you say you'd move that? Yes, I will move that. And Councillor Lauder, did you second that? <laughs> Thank you very much. All those in favor? And opposed? Carried. No? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Okay, defeat it. Okay then, uh, I wasn't prepared for plan B. Um. <laughs> so these people that we were so supportive of when they came to us with their problem, uh, they lose. Okay, sorry, Mr. Mayor? No, we're still expecting staff to get back to us with an alternative for them that's satisfactory to Council. That's still, demands still in play. That doesn't change uh, demand that we're looking for something that satisfies uh, uh, Council on this issue. Thank you very much, Mayor Marshall. There you go, Director. We'll ha have to uh, get the Mayor to perhaps enlighten us m more further. You have a question? Perhaps if I could just uh, 
ask, there, there was some other options presented in the staff report. Um, if I'm hearing correctly, it doesn't sound like any of those options are something amenable. Um, so I, I'm not sure how to proceed with this. I, um, the options are do nothing or be aware of it and do nothing at all, I think is what I'm hearing. But I'm not sure how to do that within the confines of our current bylaw that says there's no permission for this. I understand. Thank you. Um, Okay, I'm just going back into the report to see if we can salvage something out of this. Yes. Please do. Um, <laughs> I, I ha I've actually haven't read uh, the director of planning's report, so I, I'm not sure of the exactly of the options. But I think if there were an option that the members of council that voted against the the, um, the proposed motion had in mind, that they could potentially move that motion and uh, find a solution to direct the director of planning. Thank you. Uh, having gotten back into the report, I'm looking at option one that deals simply with 38 Wolf Street, which is what we. Sp specifically asked the planner to do and uh, this option is to enter into an encro encroachment agreement with uh, that particular uh, property owner and uh, in this option owners of 38 Wolf Street would enter into an encroachment agreement with the town which sets out the requirements for insurance and notifies the owners that the encroachment could be removed if necessary. In addition the owners would be responsible for the cost associated with preparation of the encroachment agreement, estimated cost $250 to $300. Um, that is as close to what we asked for as uh, the director could possibly come up with. It is specific to that particular uh, house, so um, I would um, suggest that we pr consider that uh, for a moment, and I would be looking for a mover on that. Nobody's moving. Then we're back to square one. I don't know where we're going to go from here because you did have specific instructions and you carried them out and now we're nowhere. So thank you very much, Director. Thanks, Council. Moving on. Uh, PD 1754 rezoning bylaw amendment ZA 2 2017 for 4 Leonard Avenue recommended action that the zoning bylaw amendment application ZA 2 2017 respecting 4 Leonard Avenue be deemed a complete application and that notice be of a complete application and a public meeting under the Planning Act be provided in accordance with the regulation issued pursuant to the Planning Act. Any questions on Number four, Leonard. Seeing none, do I have a mover? You're moving. Seconder, Councillor Louder. Discussion. Councillor Rawson. Thanks, Councillor uh, Madam Chair. Just one question. I know this uh, uh, agenda item came before us in July or June, and there was some discussion about um, whether it be went before the Committee of Adjustment. And I'm just not clear what happened there. I thought I read that it did, but it wasn't uh, resolved. I just like to get a little update on where we are with that piece and did anything happen through the committee of adjustment or not and I'm just a little fuzzy on those details. I'll ask the planning director to respond. Uh, thank you very much uh, Councillor Levy through you to Councillor Rawson. Um, I do think you perhaps mean item three on the planning agenda which is dealing with 245 Fox Street which was a previous application for it to the committee of adjustment. This for Leonard Avenue has never been in front of the committee. So I think we'll wait till the next round. <laughs> Any questions on four, Leonard? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Thank you. Carried. Now we'll move on to, oh, absolutely nothing. Hold on. We're moving on to 248. Whatever that address is on Fox Street, 245. 245 Fox Street. 
and this one was uh, discussed previously, and it w did go to Committee of Adjustment, who deemed it was not a minor variance. And um, so now we're looking to have a public meeting on that. Any questions for the director while I get my screen up and running again? If I could, please. Uh, so just through to Andrea, so just give us maybe a verbal update where we've gone since the last time. So this was back in July. I remember that uh, it was, uh, we made some adjustments back then to accommodate. And so I'm just uh, curious, maybe, maybe start us at the start of the conversation, walk us through, because it has been a couple of months, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you to, or sorry, through Councilor Levy, through to you. Um, so this was uh, an application that first started at the Committee of Adjustment. And initially, the application for a minor variance was to permit a larger accessory building than current, than permitted under the zoning bylaw. Um, the Committee of Adjustment did refuse that application, and as uh, Councilor Levy reported, uh, it was refused on the basis that it wasn't in conformity with the zoning bylaw, that it wasn't a minor variance and it was not appropriate use or development of land for and so be, as it failed those three tests um, it had to be refused by the committee of adjustment members as a result the Robiards did uh, make a or submit a letter to the council we did have several meetings with them about what they could do um, options were of course uh, appeal it to the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board or apply to council for a zoning amendment um, so at the July meeting, um, they requested, given some historical permissions and or um, applications of regarding this property, requested that the town actually waive the application fees, which is a $1,500 application, and that um, they, they they'll, will then submit a zoning application to deal with both the accessory building that was refused by the Committee of Adjustment, as well as the uh, non-compliant triplex use of the building itself. So subsequent to that council meeting, the Robiards have submitted an application, um, and it is being brought forward now to uh, to council for or to committee for approval to deem it complete. That there's no other information that uh, committee wants to see with respect to the application, um, and that to authorize staff to give notice for a public meeting that would be held sometime in October. Thank you very much. Do I have a mover for that, or did I do that already? No nope, mover. Councillor Lauder, seconded by Mayor Marshall. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And carried. Thank you very much. Moving on to PT 1756, re request for purchase of land, 948 Fuller Avenue, Hospice Huronia, recommended action that the property at 948 Fuller Avenue be declared surplus to the needs of the municipality and that the town of Penetanguishing enter into a purchase and sale agreement with Hospice Huronia for the sale of the land at a nominal price. Um, council heard a little bit about this uh, back in August when Ann Murphy, chair of Hospice Huronia, uh, was present. She's present again tonight. Um, first of all, before I go any further, I'll remember to ask for a mover. Mayor Marshall, seconded by Councillor LaRose. And, uh, I wonder if uh, who would like to start the discussion on this, if there are any questions. <laughs> Councillor Lauder. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I am once again fully in favor of this situation. However, I would like to make one request, and that being uh, the option being presented to us is that the lands there be zoning change to the land and whatnot. I'd also potentially see this as some sort of detrimental feature. Beautiful place, it's going to be great, but as a direct neighbor, there may be the perception that this may not be the best thing for them for future sale of their homes. What I'd like to see is, because it is an R1 residential area, so the lands on both sides are R1 residential, I'd like to see when the zoning bylaw amendment is made, it be approved for both attaching residential properties. Right now we have the fire hall, then we have a, a storage unit, and then we have a residential, the residential in question, and then another residential. I'd like to see all three of those properties change with the exact same zoning change, and as such in the future, the neighbors of Huronia will be able to apply the same sort of logic when they want to sell 
absolutely we can sell to residential, that's fine, that's already guaranteed, but they will also be able to sell to another commercial style building. So just to put them on an equal footing with their new neighbor. I love it, I think it's gonna be great, but let's give the adjacent properties the same powers in the future by zoning bylaws, all three properties together. Thank, thank, you. thank you for that comment, Councillor Lauder. Any other questions or concerns? Councillor LaRose. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to respond to that a little bit. I don't think that's a, a very good idea. Uh, if I was the owner of one of those residential properties, I would not want the town to go ahead and rezone my property without having talked to me first. Second of all, uh, if I was that residential property and I did want it to have it rezoned, maybe I don't want it rezoned R1, maybe I want to go to R2 for a different reason that would be a compatible uh, use of that property. So I think we should just deal with the one that we're dealing with tonight and the other ones we'll deal with if and when they ever uh, come here. Thank you very much, Councilor Rose. Yes, I think we should uh, perhaps focus on the sale of the land here and any other zoning ch changes to uh, adjacent properties can be dealt with uh, at a further time. Any other questions, comments? Councillor Saunders. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm wondering, uh, Madam Chair, if you have uh, some kind of definition of the term nominal price. Andrea, I believe it's you. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much uh, through uh, you, Councillor Levy, to Councillor Saunders. I believe in the staff report that uh, we referenced previous properties that were sold for a nominal price sold for $2. I believe that's what Wendat was sold for. Thank you. Councillor Lauder. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm looking back to our prior situation tonight, and we had one person come in with a situation, and we attempted to resolve it by putting not the one house, but for both sides of two streets side by side and applying same zoning applications to them. And that's caused a tremendous uproar in the community. So what I, all I'm suggesting is that if we are gonna do this, and absolutely we could talk to these people, but if we are gonna make a zoning change to one singular lot, when we have two lots, for example, to the south of the proposed uh, 740, uh, sorry, 948, we have an, uh, a house and then we have storage which has already been changed and the fire department which is already non-residential so we have all of a sudden a residential situation in the middle of nowhere land. A change from the residential is not saying you can't be residential. A change could be a mixed commercial residential so that and, and I'm assuming the same sort of change that the hospice is going to now so that there is more flexibility that those people have in the future with respect to potential sale of their property. I don't want to detriment the neighbors by putting in- Sorry, point of order, we're way offline here. So no, put a motion on the floor, get a seconder, because that's not the topic, right? Absolutely. So May you, you I? put a motion on, see if you get a seconder, then we can debate. Yeah. We're debating put, something that's put, not- Put a motion floor. on, Mike, please. I would just like to add, and we can have some words missing from our clerk, but I'd just like to add that the zoning bylaw amendment uh, for the ident identified property be extended to the direct neighbors of the property, 948 Fuller Avenue. So just that's added to the current motion that is on the floor. Do I have a second? No. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess I, I take issue with the uh, the premise that having a hospice in your community is seen as a negative or a detriment. I don't think many people in Penetanguishing would see uh, uh, a, a tiny little local hospice for those of our residents who are dying is a negative thing. I think they would all see it as a very positive, loving, and wonderful thing to do. So, uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Councillor Saunders. Thank you, Madam Chair. At previous meetings, I have heard you wax eloquently about trying to get an inventory of the lands that are surplus to the town so that we could convert those through a real estate sale into cash. When I see option one, which is that the uh, property be declared surplus to the needs of the municipality and it be sold at a nominal price, I find that whole expression to be in conflict with what you have said at earlier meetings. Now let me make my position perfectly clear. I support 
having the, the hospice in our community. But we have not at any time, I don't think, uh, discussed or debated the fact that the property which is being proposed is indeed surplus to the needs of the community. And I'm wondering if we're getting the cart before the horse here a little bit. Uh, that's point well taken. I appreciate it very much. Um, I believe uh, we're following the same process with this particular situation as we did with the Wendat land. Uh, in theory, I, I agree with you completely. No, no we're not? Okay. <laughs> um, the mayor and I were very close to that process. Right. Oh. Okay. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, but uh, this is a cause that uh, I b do believe most of council and most of uh, the community is very supportive of. And uh, sometimes you have to bend and twist a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure with, with great respect. That, that's not my point. My okay. point is that we have not had the opportunity no. to discuss the issue which is important to you, which is how much surplus property do we have in the town? And uh, is, is any of it sellable for want of a, want of a term? You don't have to convince me that this was a worthy option. I'm convinced of that totally. The only thing I am concerned about is that we're proposing to give away at a nominal price what I perceive to be a very valuable piece of property. And I think everyone around this table is also at once a guardian of good uses of our, our, our uh, property, but at the same time guardians of our property and its value. I think we owe that to our taxpayers. Now. Since we, at least to my knowledge, have not had a chance to debate or discuss that, uh, I'm a little reluctant to, to jump on board this. Thank you very much. Uh, I see some hands up at the administrative table, so whichever one of you wants to speak first, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just in response to Councillor Saunders' uh, points, and I'm, I may have my timing off slightly, and I maybe I'll look to the Director of Planning and Community Development to just verify um, what I'm about to say. But uh, there, if Council or Committee recalls, there was a referral item on that exact piece uh, that Councillor uh, Saunders is referring to for uh, quite a period of time. That referral, I referral item uh, was uh, addressed via a report to Committee the Whole in June. I believe it was early June, but I may be wrong. Uh, that report was simply received for information. Staff were looking for some um, direction or some uh, feedback in terms of uh, properties and next steps. Uh, that, uh, so in terms of next steps uh, with respect to that report, we didn't, res there, there was no next steps, there was no uh, follow up. Uh, uh, th via that uh, report, certainly at a staff level, we've talked about uh, perhaps uh, trying to get it back in front of committee, some way, shape, or form, uh, so that you know committee can maybe have another opportunity to review that. But procedurally, you know, we're talking about that at a staff level. But I just wanted to confirm that the land inventory report was brought in June to uh, to committee the whole. I believe it was June, but uh, we can validate or verify those dates. Uh, uh, as needed. Thank you very much and, and thank you for that reminder that uh, that was brought forward and uh, it was my opinion at the time that we needed to, um, while it was fine and what it was, that we need to continue to work on that uh, report and uh, uh, flush more of it out. But uh, thank you for the reminder, uh, Mr. CAO, that we did have the land inventory completed. Any questions or uh, comments on the hospice land, Madam uh, Deputy Mayor? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Certainly I'm very much in agreement with this. I think hospice has come before us and perhaps this is not uh, part of our concern, but um, they are under the gun time-wise. They are um, an opportunity for funding to move forward. And I think there is a little bit of urgency uh, that is before us. And um, having a piece of property or at least having the sanction of this council will give them um, a good situation to be able to move forward. So I'm certainly in support of what's before us this evening. I understand that there are issues, but 
Um, I wasn't here when the Wendat property came up and there was uh, a lot of discussion about that particular issue, but it did pass by council and it was sold for a nominal fee. So I think we do have a precedent and certainly I'm hoping that council will agree with this report this evening and move this situation forward. Thank you, Madam De Deputy Mayor. Any further discussion? Councillor uh, LaRue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too will be supporting this as I feel that Hospice Euronia does great and wonderful work in our community. I think it's going to be a great asset and I will certainly support it. Thank you very much. Uh, then we might as well call for the vote and see the support it gets. All those in favor? And carry. Thank you very much, Council. Moving on to referrals to upcoming agenda and staff. Referrals at the Planning and Community Development Services section endorse the following additional and existing referrals to upcoming agendas and staff. Thompson Road West extension development charges, CIP targeted incentives and opportunity, secondary suite report, and uh, as uh, the clerk pointed out, we should add um, now that we've cut down on that long list so nicely, we can start adding again, right? Yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a, just a reminder that this is, uh, you may have noticed that the, the list of items is now in a table. Mm -hmm. um, the table includes uh, four items. Four. And so we're just a reminder that we're going to try to do uh, the item that it's added. Those items are clarified for the, in terms of those four items and, that, and specifically that they are voted upon by all of Council in, t in terms of determining whether or not they will in fact be completed by staff. And remind me what our uh, new rule is on how many referrals? Through you, Madam Chair, there, the, at the end of the day, it was, there was no limit or no maximum placed on it. What was decided was, as the clerk alluded to, each, each item being added will require someone to move it, second it, and, and require majority support to be added. Uh, we want a sense from a staff perspective how much of a priority an individual item is. We will take the next two weeks or next week before we publish our agenda for the following meeting, meaning uh, two weeks from tonight, at a staff level to talk about workload and come back with some proposed timing um, because, you know, as new things get added on work plates, I'm sure committee can appreciate, it starts to impact workload and potentially might bump other priorities to make a, an individual item that might come forward tonight, as an example, a high priority that that committee wants you know in two weeks um, so we'll report back based on some feedback we get from committee uh, with our proposed timing two weeks from now um, based on the report that was brought forward via uh, a couple months ago so to review that now tonight if I want to add chickens we I need a mover or a seconder and we vote on it that's correct and then it goes to the staff at level. and then we would like a bit of an idea how much of a priority it is Okay. Uh, just from a committee perspective uh, because it will give us a sense of you know is it a priority that you want two weeks from now or is it something that can wait until these three items that are on the list get addressed and perhaps maybe it's an item for early 2018 and perhaps the chickens piece is a is a, not a great example to use but nonetheless that's it would we would appreciate it from a staff level Thank you very much. You can hold your chicken jokes. Uh, do I have a mover? Mayor Marshall, seconder, uh, Council Rawson, uh, re-putting chickens on the referral at no great emergency rush, but uh, staff can perhaps bring back to us what an appropriate timing would be instead of us telling staff because it obviously isn't life or death, but it's something that we'd like to see start it. All those in favor? Thank you. And we'll hear more about that in a, a few weeks. Oh, I'm sorry. Opposed? <laughs> Councillor Saunders, duly noted. Opposed chickens in his backyard. Yes, Mayor Marshall. Yeah, thank you. And not to ruffle any more feathers, oh. no pun intended. Um, Secondary suite report. So we had this uh, presentation from Corbo and Jennings Drive, which ties into the whole secondary conversation what we're talking about here, right? So 
what's the timing of that report in relationships to having uh, this conversation on Corbro and Jennings Drive? So that's coming up in two weeks, but I would argue that this is part of the broader conversation with secondary suites, what's it matter? I mean, I get the petition, I get, uh, but I counted quickly, you know, I've got 18 addresses out of 65. There might have been 40 names, but there's 18 addresses, about 65 in that subdivision. So it's a broader conversation than just narrow focus, though. Can we see that report coming up so that uh, that's in front of us when we make the final decision on Jennings and Corbo? Is that a, a possibility for us? I don't know where we stand on it. I'm just going to defer to her director just so that I don't speak out of turn and, and she comes over and kicks me. Uh, thank you very much. I, I did have plans to, to get this to uh, committee in early fall. Um, one of the, the challenges I'm facing right now is our official plan is very clear that it says um, secondary suites are only permitted in single detached dwellings. So if I was uh, to report on it pretty soon I would basically report to say we need an official plan amendment before we can do anything else. Um, I was hoping at this point to be further along in our official plan review process so that I could bring forward that report. So um, I, I do hear you that it is a, a matter that the committee does need uh, to be updated on given that there is legislation in place that's saying we need to be in conformity with this legislation. Um, so I will consider that as well when I look at the uh, responding to the Corbo and Jetting Drives rezoning. Go ahead, Councillor Rawson. Um, I don't know if this is helpful for staff or if Council wants to indulge this, but on almost every section there's Thompson Road extension uh, options for a Q417, and I think we all had hopes and anticipations of that being an 18 project. The reality is it's not going to happen in 18. The reality is it might not happen in 19. We've got to look at the fiscal situation, so fairness to Council or staff getting this out in the next couple months, why don't we delay it a year and we can have that conversation next year. I think that's a very wise, unless staff is chomping at the bit to bring forward that report. I, I appreciate that. Through you, Madam Chair, I don't believe that that's the case. Uh, and I think uh, certainly we recognize it's on a few different sections. And I think it was on a few different sections for a couple different reasons. But we're happy to uh, ensure that it's on one section. And hearing that potentially it's the Willow Committee to move it out a year. We're, uh, I think we're happy to do that from a staff perspective. I would be happy to drop it off of planning at this point and uh, reconsider it for in the th year 2018. Whether we make it 18, 19, or 20, we can decide. But let's move it off the plate right now. Councillor Lauder. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm fully happy with moving it off the plate, but if I could ask that uh, with that being done, because that was one of my constant concentrations when we talk about Main Street, which should have been done earlier and we, we moved, that's fine. But I would ask that Brian do bring in just a general conversation with respect to the Thompson Road West Extension as we're talking about the development of Main Street, whether it be in the second year or whether it be part of the first year. Because to me, it's all part of the Main Street plan that we're doing right now. It's the extension, it's the next, next step. So we can take it off for a full report, but I'd like some general conversation so that Council is aware of what's going to happen. Thank you very much, Councillor Lauder. Uh, I guess we're done there. Um, any questions from the public or media? Seeing none, uh, I'll hand it back to uh, the Mayor. Thank you very much. Move on to um, Transportation and Environmental Services. And uh, we have two items there, and I'll turn the chair over to Councillor Rawson. Thank you, Worship. So uh, 5A is the consent agenda for transportation. There's no items. B is matters for consideration. Uh, number one is a verbal update from the director regarding the Main Street sewage treatment plant project. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, since the date of my last verbal update uh, in the early summer uh, this year, uh, we have had our uh, various contractors in uh, being uh, Western Mechanical, uh, Walkers Electric, and Barry Welding uh, to address uh, the various deficiencies on site. Uh, we are still uh, wrapping up those, those items uh, as we speak and uh, verifying that they are complete so that we can uh, take those off the deficiency list. Uh, but I can confirm that uh, we have had a, a large number of them uh, addressed already. And uh, um, we're, we're continuing to, to work uh, to, to have those down to uh, zero. 
Thanks, Brian. Councilor Rose, do you have your typical question you want to ask, or are we good to move on? No, we're all right. Any other members have any questions? <laughs> Councilor Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are not all that far away from the onset of bad weather. And I'm wondering if we are going to have the official opening of this facility before the bad weather hits or uh, in the spring. Brian. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, through to uh, Councillor Saunders. Uh, yes, that is our intention, is to, uh, to wrap it up uh, and have a, an official opening uh, before the onset of uh, the bad weather, as you say. Uh, so uh, that is still our goal. Thank you. Um, number two is the Main Street Reconstruction Tender Award. Um, this has been a long journey for all of us. I know we got an agenda uh, addendum added yesterday. So with fairness to the process, Brian, I'm going to ask if you can just retrace for everyone where we are, where we got to, then we'll read the motion, we'll vote on that, and we'll have some discussion on that. So if you can just reiterate where we are, where we got to, and what the options are before us, and then we'll uh, have further dialogue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, as Council is aware, we redid, we retendered, uh, reissued the tender for the Main Street Reconstruction Project uh, in June this year. Uh, we had a, uh, a two-month and three-week uh, tender period, uh, or roughly 70, 79 calendar days uh, for the town, uh, tender period for the project. Uh, we reissued uh, the tender to the, uh, the 14 pre-qualified contractors on the closing date of October, uh, August 25th uh, this year. Uh, we received six tender prices uh, from uh, the six, uh, six of the 14 uh, contractors. Uh, there's a number of options uh, outlined in front of you uh, this this evening uh, that uh, address the various options that were presented in the uh, the tender report. Uh, of the eight options presented, uh, two of those options deal with uh, uh, whether uh, council would prefer a an asphalt road or a concrete road option. Uh, whether they would like to have the contractor address uh, the project in one or two years. And uh, additionally, uh, whether or not uh, Council uh, would like to have a contract that includes a stipulation of a $6,000 a day bonus slash penalty clause for late or early completion, or uh, a standard uh, $1,000 a day uh, liquidated damage uh, clause. So there's various options that are, are there for Council's consideration. And uh, there's a number of options uh, with recommendations uh, provided in the report. Thank you, Brian. Um, so everyone has the report. We'll read the, uh, the recommendation, we'll have some conversation. So it's recommended that council proceed with an option as outlined within the staff report. As Brian identified, there are eight options before us. So we'll look for a mover of an option and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So mover, Mayor Marshall. Sorry if I could, before you move for an option. So Brian, you've been chewing on this. So what is your recommendation to council? What is, what is the staff position of this? You've got all the options, you've thought about this. I mean, this is something you do 365, 724, you've got it back in front of you. What is your best advice to Council at this point in time? Uh, my recommendation, uh, my professional opinion, um, um, would be to complete the project in two, two years uh, uh, through an asphalt uh, road option. Um, I really don't, um, uh, I, seeing as the, uh, uh, the, the options are available to us, um, I would suggest that uh, if council is agreeable that a $6,000 a day bonus slash penalty would be beneficial in terms of um, uh, ensuring that the project uh, is completed on time. Uh, so th that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Brian, has there been any conversation with our contract engineer, CC Tatum, with you and them and or any of the contractors on the ability and the successful ability to complete the project in one year. What does that dialogue look like if there has been any? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I have spoken with our uh, contract engineers at CC Tatham and uh, they did uh, um, contact uh, the low bid uh, for the asphalt option uh, under the one year option, which is JB Enterprises. Um, they did contact them uh, asking them their, their uh, frank opinion on their ability to complete it in one year versus two. Uh, they did indicate to our engineers that they would prefer to complete it in one year uh, rather than tie up uh, their uh, best crews for more than one year. Uh, their, pre their preference was to complete it in one year. <coughs> Deputy Mayor. Yes. Um, Move into an option. No. Well, let's move an option, let's have some discussion. So, let's move an option, we'll have some discussion on the option, we'll go from there. So, Councillor Lewis, you moving an option? 
Yes, uh, I would like us to move uh, option three, I believe it is, to do a, an asphalt road in a one year period. A seconder for that motion. Councillor Levy. So now we'll have some discussion. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I, well, I, I don't know if I can ask my question now. What, what I wanted to ask is a two year option. What did that look like? What, where do we start and where do we end? Thank you. Uh, through uh, uh, Councillor Ross and to uh, the Deputy Mayor, um, the first phase, uh, which would be completed in the first year being 2018, uh, would be from uh, the STP uh, driveway entrance at the bottom of uh, Main Street to up to and including uh, Edward Street entrance. Uh, so that would be considered the first phase of the project. Uh, the second phase would be the completion of both ends. So from uh, uh, Edward Street up to and including uh, Thompson's Road and from the STP entrance to uh, Wolf Street. Okay, can I ask one more question? For sure. Good. The one year option, uh, where is that proposed to stop or have you ha start or have you had those discussions? Um, in, in terms of, uh, just for a clarification, is, is the, the, the approach to how, do, how the contractor would uh, yes. complete the project. Yes, if um, we had, if uh, the option was JB Enterprise one year with the asphalt option, where would they start, um, yeah, where would they start the project, upper um, or lower? Not, uh, we haven't actually uh, gotten that far with JB Enterprises, uh, yes, in their discussions, but uh, in discussing this uh, prior to uh, the tender period uh, with our, our, our engineers at CC Tatham, uh, it's, it's our view that the contractor would throw multiple crews uh, on the Main Street reconstruction project and tackle it in uh, perhaps two or three different work areas on, on, on the Main Street. Thank you. Mayor Marshall. Just through the Councillor Rose, <coughs> so I see a couple here, uh, Councillor Rose, and I just want to know which one we're moving. Option 7 says, so award the one-year contract to Arnott Construction, uh, inclusive of a 6000 per day uh, bonus penalty clause for their submitted tender price of uh, $11.9 Then option 8, again, is um, Arnott in one year, uh, but with a $1,000 a day penalty. I was just wasn't clear which one of those two you were moving, if in fact that was the one you were moving, Councillor LaRose. Well, it said three, but I don't. So three was the one-year option, GB Enterprise Asphalt option, inclusive of 6,000-day bonus penalty clause for their submitted tender price of 10 million five hundred. Five hundred. Okay, got it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lauder. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have three questions all in all. Uh, the first one, um, I, I'm not 100% sure of what the difference is between 6,000 plus or minus uh, bonus and, and, and deficit. Um, versus the one thousand li dollar liquidated. Uh, the the other part of that is also considering what would allow them to extend. For example, if we had tremendously inclement weather, hurricane, whatever, is that allowing them to extend the time frame? And how does that affect these sort of bonuses? So, uh, and and also if they go into the two year time frame, um, does that mean that you have the entire two years? And as such, then all of a sudden having the six thousand dollars plus minus bonus gives them a lot of extra time to have that six thousand dollar bonus, and we're paying out a ton of ton of money because we've given them two years and they're able to do it faster. So, if you could comment with respect to that, the second one is um, I, I, I fully appreciate, and so no real question is I fully appreciate. I was leaning towards concrete, but now I do like the actual reading the letter from CC Tatham, but I did allude to it earlier. Uh, and the Thompson Road, uh, and, and it wouldn't be the same contract, but if we were to go into two years um, and we were to have a, a, a time ending midway through the second year, 2019, would we then be able to, with pre-planning, pre of course, look towards the Thompson extension being done the same sort of 2019 um, so that we only have the town in a mess for two years as opposed to having Main Street construction and then the entrance to the town part of Main Street, a third year. Councillor Lauder, why don't we leave the Thompson Road? We'll, we'll talk about Main Street tonight. Thompson Road's another issue. We'll talk about that at budget time. We'll talk about the planning for Thompson Road at time, but that's not really. I hear what you're saying, but we, 
we don't have the plan for Thompson Road today. We've made some ideas we want, but I, I think it'll come up at budget time. With fairness, thank you. So really, the, the first rate respect the liquidated as opposed to the plus minus bonus one to two years. How does that affect them? Do they have the capability of extending, based on weather or something? God forbid, happens. Brian. Thank you, uh, th through Councillor Ross and to Councillor Lauder. Um, yes, the difference between um, the $6,000 a day uh, and the $1,000 a day liquidated damages uh, clause, uh, the $6,000 a day is uh, a bonus or a penalty um, should the contractor finish the project before the stipulated completion date. Um, for example, if it's the one-year completion date, they have to have everything up to and including uh, base asphalt um, on on Main Street. Uh, I believe it's by the end of November um, on any given year that we choose to to start the project. Um, for example, so if they went five days over, uh, it would be six thousand dollars a day times those five days. Con on the con on the converse side is is that if they do finish early, then they get that bonus of six thousand dollars a day for early completion. This would obviously all be verified by our engineer to make sure that you know the the requirements of those bonuses and penalties are met. Uh, on the other side of it is uh, the thousand dollar a day liquidated damages clause, which is basically a um, a clause that is is standard in in reconstruction projects uh, to essentially recoup uh, additional uh, contract and inspection fees uh, due to late uh, late finish by the contractor. Uh, so essentially, the, the town uses that to uh, make themselves whole uh, due to the uh, extended schedule. Um, your question about the weather, weather delays, yes. Uh, t if there is a, for example, a, a rain day uh, on, on the project, uh, that would be considered a, a justifiable weather day on site and wouldn't go towards their um, substantial completion date. So they would be extended those number of days. With, with that in case, then, if we had a November, um, is there a cutoff date, meaning that we know they can't build past November 30th, so that if they had more than 30 rain days, then all of a sudden their substantial completion becomes April 1st, May 1st, 2019. That, that's all part of part Yes, of the that's, that's right. So, um, for example, if there's 10 del weather delay uh, days, um, on the project, and, and, and it's, these, are, these are clauses specified in the contract, what is de deemed a weather day, for example. Uh, for example, if there's an extra associated with the contract that uh, is outside of the contract limits, for example, uh, that is uh, the contractor is, is awarded additional days to complete that type of work, uh, that's also taken into consideration as well. Thanks, Brian. You go with that, Councillor Leonard? Mayor Marshall, you're next up. Thank you very much. Just trying to get my head around the, the numbers here. So, so if we do one year, that's going to cost us $275,000 additional. So I see a uh, two-year option for 10.295, and Councillor Rose is recommending an option at uh, 10.570, so about 275000 So what I'm wrestling with is so we had one tender earlier. That was $9.4 million to do it in one year or two years. I can't remember. Uh, Sorry, that was two years, and I think I believe it was 9.88. 9.88 for one year. So 9.88. So so we rolled the dice. We thought we'd get more tenders and hopefully get a lower price. We got more tenders, but the price didn't uh, didn't come down as we had hoped. So so 9.88. So we're up about 600 grand on the project uh, because we rolled that dice, and then we could lessen that uh, burden on our taxpayers if we do it over two years by 275,000. That's what I was trying to rec reconcile in my head. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Marshall. Councilor Mayo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a question to Brian. Like, obviously, the, the person that's going to get the, the contract will be notified within a week, hopefully, or two weeks. And this is a project that we want to start in 2018. Is there anything stopping that contractor to start 1st of October? And part of that question, too, is, is he going to be allowed to work seven days a week? Thank Brian? you. Uh, through, uh, uh, through you, uh, Councillor Rawson, to uh, Councillor Mayette, 
Uh, this, the, the same question came up uh, initially before we issued the tender, whether or not we would uh, open up the, uh, the hours of, of work, and, and that is entirely uh, up to the contractor. If he wants to work seven days a week, uh, we, can, we can permit that. Can the second part start up? Can you start this fall? Uh, yes, and sorry to your your set, your first point. Uh, I, I would have to check with our um, our, uh, our our con the, the contractor. Obviously, if he, he may have a full schedule for this year, um, so um, it, we we could definitely uh, pose that to them and see if see what work could be done this fall. Thank you, Councillor Saunders. Yeah, next up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Back when we tendered this project the first time, Brian, I understand there were some comments informally from, uh, from builders that the project was not doable in one year. Uh, how much credibility is there in the proposals from any of these companies that they can get it done in one year, in your opinion? Uh, thank you. Through uh, Councillor Ross and to uh, Councillor uh, Saunders, uh, I myself asked the same question. Um, uh, to our engineer. Uh, he seemed to, uh, through his con conversations with uh, the one contractor, they seemed very confident in completing it um, in, in the one year. Um, and that could be a product of the, uh, the, the fact that we started our tender process later and now we've, uh, we've got a full, almost a full year uh, of uh, construction season uh, for this project. So that, that could have factored into it. Uh, and also, uh, uh, it could have been a product of uh, the, uh, the marketplace. Uh, there was uh, a lot of work uh, out there to bid at the time. And uh, so there, that could have also uh, factored into it in terms of their ability to free up forces uh, to do that. Uh, because we've uh, got to the marketplace essentially very early this year and we're tendering it uh, um, before the actual construction season begins, uh, could factor into their uh, increased confidence in getting it done in, in one year. Uh, that doesn't uh, change my recommendation, uh, but uh, that's what I've heard from the one contractor. Okay. Thank you. One sub, uh, additional question, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to make sure my understanding is accurate. I have heard a variety of descriptions of what it means to do the project in one year. Uh, I've heard from, uh, from uh, several people that what it involves is starting at one end and stepping the project all the way down to the other end so that the entire road is not under construction at any one time. What I heard from you a few moments ago was uh, at odds with that, that in fact, uh, if I understood you correctly, the uh, successful construction company might open up the entire street from one end to the other uh, for the entire construction period. Now, is my new understanding the accurate one? Uh, through uh, Mr. Chair to uh, Councillor Saunders, uh, no, not necessarily. Um, the uh, uh, I guess uh, my explanation might need some clarification. So, uh, for a, a large project of this nature, uh, the the contractor would uh, would uh, uh, tackle it in in two uh, two different front fronts potentially. So instead of opening up the entire road um, for uh, the servicing uh, that's required for the construction project. One servicing crew would start at the bottom uh, as one phase of the project and uh, another uh, servicing crew could start at the midway point and work their way south. So that you're, and then they would move sequentially south from that point. So that you're not opening, the up, opening up the entire road, you would actually complete one section or one block at a time, but you would be doing it in two different fronts. Thank you for that, and that gets a very important clarification because uh, we're going to have to reroute traffic while this project is underway, and I think we have to have a firm gra grasp of what it is the, con the contractor wants to do. Um, any further members? Councilor Rose. I, I just wanted to remind Council, one of the reasons that we, I, I put forth that suggestion was is that uh, it disrupts the main street for one year only. That's the whole purpose of doing it in one year. If you're going to have to bite the bullet and put up with the construction, you're going to put up with it for one year, not two years. And that was, you know, for the sake of not a lot of money, uh, to me that would solve a, a big problem for our businesses on the main street that the, the, the disruption would only be for one year. 
Brian, a couple of clarification points, if you can help. I think there's been some good conversation, and we did talk about this a year ago. So there are pieces put in the contract about communication, continuity, and those pieces that have been built in here to alleviate some of these issues that Councillor Saunders brought up. Maybe if we can just highlight some of those points. And the second point is, can you just go over the pre-qualification process? Like, I think when we talk about the uh, contractor's ability, at the end of the day, they went through a process on their ability to perform the job and right now we're basically looking at, because they all at the degree have been critiqued on the ability to perform the job, now we're deciding who's best one year, two year concrete asphalt, and that's really what we're looking at, if you can clarify. Uh, certainly, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the pre-qualification process uh, is basically a, a, a screening process to ensure that, the pro that each contractor that wants to submit a pro uh, bid on the project has the capability, uh, the forces, like not only the, the personnel, but also the machinery necessary to complete the project. Uh, with a project of this size and uh, with the, the potential option of doing it in one year, uh, the, the ability to throw an, a lot of uh, machinery, uh, excavators, uh, various equipment is, is, a, is a very, very important component. Uh, and not only uh, that, is their previous experience in, in dealing with uh, or completing and on time uh, similar projects of, the, of this nature. Uh, so that screening process uh, uh, allows us to, uh, um, to determine if a contractor is, is, is a, uh, the, his ability meets our requirements. And Brian, that process was reviewed with you and CCT them previous to the release, the re-release of this second package. That's right, yeah. Any further questions for uh, our Thank you. We've talked a lot about the actual work, and we haven't talked about the money. It is uh, substantially more than it was last year. We kind of anticipated that. So, and I know the treasurer certainly in the documents we have before us has outlined how uh, we're going to get this money to uh, complete this project. So, Carrie, is there anything that you wanted to add to this? Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, attached to uh, Brian's report, I've done my, um, my due diligence in terms of the funding overview in terms of uh, the total net cost of the project. I went over it with, um, with Brian um, and including the, the um, contract administration, the geotechnical testing, the contingency, and obviously taking HST rebates into consideration, the, the project net cost of $10.8 million. I did outline in detail what the, the current 2017 and 2018 capital budget um, had um, set aside for this project, um, almost $7.1 million. And then how can we come up with the um, other $3.7 million. Um, in speaking with uh, Brian and, and Jeff Hamlin, um, the um, provincial top-up funding that we will be um, eligible for next year, oh, sorry, uh, for next year's top-up funding. Um, an application is in process. Uh, again, the funding overview is based on uh, that top-up application of $1.6 million being successful. Um, but certainly, um, I've met with Infrastructure Ontario in preparation for this project. And um, once the final um, time frame for the project, one year versus two. Um, if it is over two years, construction financing is available through Infrastructure Ontario at a lower interest rate than if we were to venture it immediately for a one-year completion. Um, as well, um, taxation is the final piece that um, can be added to that uh, project if we're unsuccessful in the top-up funding application um, and certainly um, looking at our reserves um, for this project is is probably uh, I would uh, I would recommend better than increasing our our debenture thanks Carrie thanks deputy mayor if anything further deputy mayor on that 
Mayor Marshall. Thank you very much. Um, Brian, if we were to do it over two years, um, I do recall last time we had the conversation um, that we talked about year number one because that's our downtown. We talked about going from points in Maine to the STP it would be year number one, doing your downtown core, and then year number two would be from points to the uh, uh, to the Angels and from the STP to the waterfront. Is that still an option open to a discussion with the uh, contractor over the two-year period? So can you kind of pre prescribe, if you will, the start and finish points of year one? Uh, thank you. Uh, through uh, Councillor Austin to uh, His Worship, uh, uh, I, I think that is something that could be uh, flexible uh, in terms of uh, discussing that with the contractor. Any further members have any uh, further comments or questions for Brian, Carrie, or any other staff members or each other on this item? Council LaRue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, too, uh, agree with uh, Councillor LaRose that I think this project should be completed in one year. I think it's unfair to our downtown merchants that we stretch this beyond the one year. So whatever we're looking at, I'm going to be supporting a one-year deal. Thank you, Councillor LaRue. If we have a rainy summer like we did this year, it may end up being a two-year anyways. So there's two ways to look at this. Any further members have anything to add to this conversation? Councillor Levy. You second it. I will do that. Just, uh, I just want to make sure. Any further conversation on this item by anyone? Okay, seeing none, the motion before us is the Main Street Reconstruction Tender Award. It's recommended the council proceed with option three, which is a one-year option of, of, of the contract to JB Enterprises Asphalt Road Option, inclusive of the $6,000 a day bonus or penalty clause for their submitted, submitted tender price of $10,570,889.47, as outlined within the staff report. So that's the option. So one year to JB with the $6,000 bonus uh, penalty clause. See no further conversation on this item. It was moved by Councillor Rose, second by Councillor Levy. We'll call for the vote. All in favor? And opposed? That is carried. Brian, thank you. And Carrie, and Jeff, and everyone. This has been a huge amount of work. Huge amount of work, but uh, we're there. Two more, two more weeks until it was ratified, but Brian. Uh, sorry, just a, I guess a, a point of, uh, of detail. I think the second part of the motion wasn't read. If I'm not mistaken, the excluding HST. Uh, no, and that, and that the financing required to complete the project proceed as outlined in the staff report. Okay, I, I thought I had, but uh, and oh, that. Oh, sorry, I, I may be mistaken. No, I, I and that the finance required to complete the project proceed as outlined in the staff report. We'll call for the vote. All in favor? And opposed? <laughs> that is carried. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yeah, it comes, comes to council in two weeks for ratification. Okay, but there's two people in our, and they, they seem to be quite excited when we voted in favor. So, so it's still good to so yeah. yeah, so this comes, uh, the, this comes to council in two weeks for ratification. Yeah. Are you yeah. representing nobody. the contract or nobody? Oh, you're just here as, okay. They're not just, they're here because they're concerned oh, citizens. So but in two weeks, we'll, we'll ratify it. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this, it's been a lot of work on everyone's part, so thank you to everybody. Um, referrals, before we read them, are there any referral revisions, additions, additions for anyone? Seeing none. It's recommended that Transportation Environmental Services section endorse the following additional and existing referrals to upcoming agendas and staff. We have uh, three uh, issues. Thompson's Road, we'll move that out to 18. Champlain Road weight limits. A uh, Q4 of 17, transit agreement renewal options, a Q4 of 17. A mover. Uh, Mayor Marshall. I have a, I have a, a point uh, of concern, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering why we will keep Champlain Road weight limits on. Uh, I, I think that is a, a waste of time because Champlain Road is actually a connecting link there's no heavier traffic on that road than there was before it was done. And I don't know where you're going to go with trying to find uh, uh, limits to that road. So 
That's just my opinion. Councillor Roo, um, I remember this conversation where we were talking about protecting the road and those pieces and Brian was going to do some traffic measuring, which I think has occurred already. I saw the measuring device out and I think he's going to do a report soon. So, Brian, is that a fairly accurate statement? Something's coming soonish? Uh, yes, uh, you're, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Um, so, I, I hear you. I think it could be a, a consent item and then we agree or disagree or we just let it go on. But I, I hear you. If the work wasn't done, we'd, we'd vote to eliminate. But Let's do it. Seeing that, I read them out. Um, I need a mover. I think it was Mayor Marshall, a seconder. Mayor Mayotte, um, we'll call for the vote. All in favor? Uh, opposed? None is carried. Questions from media and public? Seeing none, sorry. Uh, Mayor Marshall, it's back to you. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you very much. And now we'll go over to uh, Section 6, uh, Section B, Item 6, uh, Recreation and Community Services, and turn the chair over to uh, Councillor LaRue, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, starting with the consent agenda, recommended action that the following consent agenda items, having been given due consideration, be received for information. The Recreation Assets, Parks and Facility Analysis. Two, correspondence from Lois Irvine Community Futures Development Corporation. Three, the cor concrete wharf inspection. Uh, four curling club minutes of June 7, 2017 and July 5, 2017. And seniors council minutes of June 6, 2017. Does anyone wish to pull any of these items? Deputy Mayor. Number two, please. Number two, that's correspondence from Lois Servine. Okay. And Councillor Rawson. Uh, number one, the recreation assets. Okay. And I have a mover and a seconder on the balance. Councillor Rawson and Deputy Mayor, all in favor. Carried. Okay, so we go back to one and recreation assets, parks and facilities analysis. Uh, Councillor Rawson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I had a great opportunity to talk to Sherry about this. So I'm, I'm good with this. I'm voting for it. But I just wanted clarity for everyone. So the intents, the purpose of this was we put money for the capital and this is to do a fulsome review of our recreation assets. We won't have time to make an informed decision for budget coming up. So it's to let Sherry go and get, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm feminine speaking, to get a fulsome review of what the assets look like so we can come back next year with kind of a, a plan of attack from there. Is that fair? Sure. Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Ross, and that's, that's exactly correct. So I, I think it's wonderful, and thank you. You're good with it? Thank you. Okay, and then number two, uh, Deputy Mayor, mm -hmm. correspondence from Lowe Servine. Yes, I think in the correspondence they're asking for um, usage of the Brian Orser Hall on a certain date. So I would just like to make a motion that we allow that to happen. Okay, uh, actually, actually, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, section is recommending that uh, they be given three hours uh, at, at no cost. Okay, so you don't need a motion for that? I don't believe, I think if section is recommending it uh, and council is in agreement, I don't know. But that's not part of this, uh, this report that's before no, us tonight? No, no. So, so I'll get a mover and a seconder. Yep, I'll move. move it. Seconder. Councillor Louder, all in favor. It's carried. Thank you. Um, in the items and reports that uh, I have just read uh, in the uh, consent agenda, one thing perhaps that I would like uh, our uh, Director of Recreation Community Services uh, to expand on would probably be uh, this concrete wharf inspection. Uh, in discussions with Sherry, I think looking down the road, we may have a bit of a major problem here. So Sherry, could you touch on that? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Councillor LaRue. Um, so beginning of the, early in the, the boating season, the Harbour Master made me aware of some sinkholes around our uh, tick office. And uh, I guess historically, um, Public Works has come and, and filled some of that gravel. However, um, it's starting to wash away and the asphalt is collapsing. So I spent some time um, this summer looking up old files to try and uh, get an understanding of, of the concrete structure and whatnot. And uh, Mr. Murray helped me with some of that as well. And um, there was a report done in 2002, an engineering report. And at that time, there was um, outlining some options for the concrete wharf and the north wharf. 
uh, some short-term repair fix, some long-term, and some replacement costs. Um, the the financial requirements were um, quite significant, um, and because of the uh, potential safety impact and having an engineer, engineer come and do a preliminary look at it, uh, they thought that this shouldn't wait. We should do an, an, uh, an investigation now. There was some money earmarked for the budget next year to do this investigation, but we've moved that up. Um, and hope that we can also um, get an understanding of the capital investment requirements as soon as possible so that we can start planning and understanding the work that will need to be done at the at the wharf. So, so then, uh, Sherry, we will be receiving a, a report once the engineers have completed their work? Yes, I believe they're going to do this uh, investigation started on September 20th. It probably will take them three to four weeks to, to fabricate a report, uh, but when I receive it, I will prepare something for Council. Very good. Moving on to matters for consideration, the Copeland Creek Trail Connection. The recommended action is that the additional funds of $15,087 required to complete the Copeland Creek Trail Connection be funded $2,104 from taxation earmarked in the 2017 capital budget as trails development and $12,983 from development charges reserve recreation. Questions, comments, concerns? There being none, a mover? Sure. Are you moving, Councilor Rawson, or are you asking a question? Pardon? I put up my hands when you said concerns. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait till you move and move it. Okay, mover. Sure. Councilor Rose, seconder, Councilor Mayotte. Questions or concerns? Councilor Rawson. Thank you, my, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I know this is coming $2,000 from taxation, 12000 from DCs. I'm looking forward to budget process coming up here in a matter of probably four or five weeks from now. I think we have a lot of uh, big expenditures coming. Uh, we're going to talk about Chatham Street. We're going to talk about Thompson's Road. We're talking about Main Street. We're talking about all the things that we need to do. And we don't have the funds to do them. We've got to start looking at uh, what are we going to say yes to and then what are we going to say no to. And I think we, we easily say yes to these little items, but they're starting to add up. Um, so I'm really concerned about that. So I'm going to vote no because I usually vote no whenever it's not in the budget. Um, so I'm going to be consistent on that approach. But the one thing when I read this, and if I, if I'm, if I misspeak, then maybe Sherry can correct me, but I think something was planned to do a couple years ago, but it wasn't, the carry forward wasn't brought forward. Um, I still don't see why we, if we have 23000 in the bank today, let's do $23,000 worth of work today. It's back to what Mayor Marshall said about the Main Street. Could we have staggered a little bit here and then a little bit next year? Let's do the same thing with this. We don't have so much money to do it. Let's do what we can do for the trail. But we can't keep spending. We don't have the money. I'm getting worried about our budget this year. I'm getting worried about budget next year. So I'm going to oppose it because we don't have the funds. And we've got to be mindful of the fort. Um, I know out and about, a lot of people are watching that. And a lot of people are saying that. The tax increase we did in June, I don't know about you, but I haven't heard too many positive comments about that. So I just want to say, let's be mindful about spending money that's not in the budget. Not, I'm just going to consistently say no to this again. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Actually, I've heard nothing but good things about our budget, and everybody's pretty happy with the 1% overall. So I've, uh, I've had the opposite experience from Councillor Rawson. Having said that, I do agree with Councillor Rawson that uh, we should delay this to next year. I mean, it's 2017, the, the snow is going to fly, and we're worried about trails. You know what? Let's worry about the trails during the budget process. Uh, so I, I agree with Councillor Rawson that this should be a kick to the curb. Let's have a look at it in, in the budget and see where it fits in for next year or the year after. But uh, it's, uh, it's late in the year, and for this to come here, I don't see the, uh, the pressure point or the sense of urgency to, uh, uh, to go down that path. I'd move to defer if I can get a seconder then. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to go to our Director of Recreation and, and just ask uh, Sherry uh, in this project, <coughs> are there any concerns of health and safety in regards to this? Uh, no, I don't believe there to be um, any health and safety concerns. I think some of the people who use the, the trail um, currently as it, as it goes, um, the bike lanes, the, the Copeland Creek Trail, they can cross at Robert Street um, and use the sidewalk and then catch the trail back um, back again but I don't see there being any concerns of people you know traveling on the road and not having somewhere to go 
Okay, so we could put this on our 2018 capital. Okay, uh, you ref move, move to defer her and second her all in agreement. Or Councillor Saunders, you have. I go uh, defer to uh, the budget process uh, for 2018, Councillor Saunders. That, uh, and that's what I was suggesting that we bring it back on our 2018 capital. Yeah, so that would be when do we, so Councillor Saunders looking for a date. So when would this come up, Carrie? Sorry. Uh, Council will see. Can, sorry, Council will see draft one of the budget. Uh, I believe the date is uh, special budget meeting October 18th. Okay, so let's defer to uh, October 18th special budget meeting. Then I'm fine with that if Councillor Rossin is. Okay, we're good with that. Madam Clerk. Okay, sorry, just looking for clarification. The original motion, we were speaking of moving and seconding and then deferring it. Um, are we talking now that we would have a new motion? I wouldn't necessarily call it a friendly amendment because we're, 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 not ta we're taking away the cost. We're saying that the Copeland Creek Trail Connection Project be deferred to the 2018 budget process? No, I'm saying this recommendation comes to Council at the 2018 budget process as it looks today. This recommendation specifically? Yeah, deferred okay. right there. Okay, uh, all in favor? Carry. Now we come to the Martin Valley Park Revitalization 2017 Capital Project, the recommended action that staff be directed to proceed with acquiring concept design options from a landscape architect varying in budget and scheme. Your, uh, Madam Deputy, remove, seconder, as worship, comments or concerns, Councillor Rawson. So I've got concerns with this item as well. Um, and I'm looking for clarification from staff. When we did the splash pad, when we did the new park at Rotary Park, we had the, I don't think we paid a consultant to come up with plans for us. I think we had the, uh, whoever eventually put in, come up with some plans for us. I, I personally, why don't we look at, going to RFP and part of RFP can be we're looking for this and whoever wants to supply us the equipment can come up with some ideas bounty castles slides swings whatever and let them come to us with the ideas uh, so, and then provide it yeah, and, well, and let's go to RFP with that instead of spend thirty thousand dollars that's better to go to new swings Councillor Ross and actually you're correct because I was sitting on both of those uh, at the time uh, when we approved the uh, uh, the um, parkette down there in the waterfront and also the splash pad and the designs uh, were submitted to us by the RFP people, the people who were interested in bidding and, and supplying. So they were done in that process. So I, I don't disagree. Madam Deputy Mayor. I think this has a little bit different component to it, although there is uh, playground equipment the property also has a basketball court or possibility of, and it also has the possibility of trails within the existing uh, forest that is there to connect into um, our new subdivision. So I just caution, I think it, it's a little bit different than what the splash pad was, is, was all about. Councillor Rawson. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the consent agenda item tonight, we talked about the recreation asset plan, and in there it clearly articulates that it's to tie into trails, parks, and all those other components in that. So my understanding is that consent agenda item we just approved, we already gave someone the ability to do that work for us. So to answer the Deputy Mayor, I think we just did that. Sure, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, that's Terry, would you there. like to comment on this? The, this, I'm seeking clarity because the Martin Valley, there was 30000 set aside in the capital budget this year for revitalization of the park. However, um, I don't have clear direction on how to invest that money and use it wisely. And now that um, I'm aware that we have additional parkland that we acquired that's added to it, um, it was a suggestion to say before we you know, dump money into it, let's get someone to take a long, hard look and give us a strategy. Um, before making sure that uh, we're using that money wisely um, to service that whole corner corner of town, is that that is the only park in that area of town and is surrounded by three schools. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. CAO. Through you, Mr. Chair, just to further add on to what the Director is speaking of, uh, and I, I wasn't around when uh, the process was undertaken for Rotary Champlain Wendat Park, um, but I, I guess there's really two ways Council can or Committee can look at this. One, staff felt that there might be an opportunity to, to leverage uh, $8,000 to actually get some designs and some concept drawings in front of them so that you know you folks have a you know general sense of what you're looking for given the uniqueness of the property and then we go to market uh, or we go and ask for proposals for something a little bit more definitive as opposed to the other option being going to market and saying we have this large piece of property that's extremely unique and we're kind of putting our eggs into a basket where we're asking a number of proponents to come forward with a number of different proposals. So it's entirely up to committee in terms of how to proceed. Staff felt that it, you know, it would be good use of, of $8,000 given the topography and given the uniqueness of the property to nail down and come to some consensus in terms of what committee's looking for on that property based on some options from an expert and then go to market and have people definitively providing proposals uh, or tenders on specifically what it is committees looking for as opposed to you know really getting one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum when you go to go to market f asking for proposals hopefully that provides some clarity thank you uh, councillor Levy thank you very much uh, I'm now starting to see the wisdom of perhaps spending the eighty two hundred dollars um, couple of reasons. Uh, staff has obviously looked at this closely and decided that they would need more guidance uh, by way of uh, concept designs. The other thing is that it might take a lot longer than we uh, might like to see. We might uh, take our time on this and do one piece at a time and if you have the drawings in front of you, you can choose the piece that you do and then the following year do another one, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, another piece of my concern over this is uh, the accessibility of uh, any new playground equipment, the fact that uh, rubberizing uh, the, the surface, uh, which we uh, believe have enshrined in policy now, uh, is going to up the price considerably, probably $60,000, well, no, it's a smaller play area. But anyway, it's going to up the price. So I think having an overall plan and then uh, taking it from there, perhaps in this case, be a wise decision. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor LaRose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I was okay with this, but now I'm not okay with this. The, the more I look at it, and, and being that it is a unique piece of property with all the stuff, uh, what's the harm in us getting a whole whack of designs from whoever would like to participate? There could be a whole big design out there that we haven't thought of that's worth big bucks or worth little bucks. So, you know, being on the theme of saving a little bit of cash, uh, let's just see what the market would like to see there, see what those professionals think that they could provide us. And uh, we don't have to accept it. We just have to look at it and decide if it's a, a good or a bad idea. Uh, I don't think I can agree with you there, Councillor LaRose, for the simple fact that when you're dealing with uh, slides and swings and, and uh, water slides and whatever else, they're not property assets. And they, they didn't tell us how to develop the property. They told us what they would put on it and how they would put on it. So what we're looking in this concept here is to find out what would be suggested and recommended for that land. So uh, Deputy Mayor. Just my last comment, if we in fact have a plan, we may be able to go to the housing authority of Janak Drive since the park will be enjoyed by their residents. They may have a few dollars in their pockets that uh, they could help with. So that's another good reason to have, have the plan laid out. Councillor Rawson. I'm not poo-pooing this idea. I, I don't think it's bad. I just think there's another way. We just approved, Sherry wants to do the recreation asset. Let her do the high level 30,000 evaluation. Then we'll do a deep dive into it from there. I don't know what the rush is in September when we're, a couple, we're not putting it in tomorrow anyways. 
we're probably going to look at something like down a road or a trail that's going to be more than $30,000, which you don't have the money to do anyway. So we're going to get a report and then another report next year, and then they're going to come back and say, we need more money to do it. What's the rush? The reports are saying we're going to go to the Accessibility and Youth Committee after we ask the experts. Why don't we ask the Accessibility and the Youth Committee first? Let's engage our local people. Let's let our previous people that want to do the deep dive. Then at budget time, let's say, okay, we want to do a deeper dive into the park. Let's put more money in capital so we can implement it, and then let's get someone come in and draw some pretty pictures now they want to look. What's the rush today? I don't get it. Let's let the previous assessment occur. Let's let our existing groups do it. And at budget time, let's be serious and put money in it. If we don't, then let's delay it. Why are we rushing on September 13th? We're not going to install it now anyways. Well, I agree with you that uh, the, 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 uh, it's not a process for something that's going to happen this fall. Uh, but when you're talking about rush, I think that uh, it would be a good idea to have the thing in plan so that it could be part of our 2018 uh, projects and, and be started in the early spring so that if people could probably enjoy it in the summer months. So uh, I think it's still a, a, a good idea to have the process done so that we know what we can do with it. Councillor Lauder. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess my concept is that the bulk of the property here, there, there's the Martin Valley portion that we already own and which we have some thoughts in current development, and there's uh, the little division which is actually larger. Um, I thank you, Deputy Mayor, when you mentioned the trails, but the trails is not even that a part of this because the trails is in the wooded sections to the east. So this is just looking at the park, which is half the $60,000 that was allocated. And what I'm finding is that there's, uh, there's a potential thrust to put off, put off, put off. Uh, and for us to go out and ask for a slew of ideas, but not giving people any concept of what, you, you know, we're just saying to them, here's land, um, give us a solution and, and we'll turn you down or be happy with it. Um, I'm happy with putting forth the money in order to get a plan. I believe that the money, the plan that's going to be presented in whatever way is going to cost more than what we have to develop into that trail in one year. So it's going to be a multi-year situation. And then if I could also just take a half moment, because I know I always do this, but if I look at T&E, exactly the same thing, we get a plan. So we've already done Fox Street, we've already done Chatham and whatnot with respect to plans, so that we can address those plans when the opportunity comes appropriate. In the same way, if we have a plan, then as as Deputy Mayor says, and as potential funding may come arrive, arise, we can address those that plan. It is going to be a multi-year park. We're not going to do it all in one year. The whole thing, as Councillor Levy just mentioned, just the surface may cost forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars more than it's allocated. So it okay. isn't something that's going to come and be done right away. It's something we have to plan and look forward to, and develop a budget over several years in order to accommodate. Thank you. Uh, I think that we've had ample uh, discussion on this whole thing. And a comment I might make, uh, Councillor Lauder, is that uh, when you get these plans done, the ones from Rec and Culture are a lot cheaper than those from T&E. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and with, that, with that, I am, go I am going to move that we uh, go forward with staff recommendation. Uh, I have a seconder. Well, you got a motion? All right. So, all in favor. yeah, all in favor. Op opposed. Carried. <laughs> referrals to upcoming agenda staff referrals that the Recreation Community Services section endorse the following additional existing referrals to upcoming agendas and staff. Tourism advertising, print and online for future consideration, recreation assets, parks and facilities analysis, cycling strategy, Karma Ecology Garden Report Agreement, pickleball and ice subsidy review. Do we wish to uh, remove or add any there? Councillor uh, Saunders? Mr. Chair, I'm not sure I want to add anything. I wanted to compliment our CAO on the new expected date. We don't see a winter anymore. I think it uh, ties it down much more precisely. All of that being said, uh, the third quarter ends in approximately two weeks. And uh, it seems to me it's the role of, of uh, section 
to discuss options for future pickleball facility, for example, so, in, in, uh, so that the uh, recommendation from committee can go to council at the end of the, uh, end of the uh, month. So my question then is, uh, at what point will we be discussing the pickleball issue? Because uh, according to the calendar, we're supposed to be discussing it tonight, but I don't see it on the agenda. Uh, thank you, Councillor Saunders. Um, we are actually looking at it, and uh, I think Sherry can probably update us on that. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Saunders, I anticipate having a uh, report to Council at the next meeting, which is in September, which is, um, it may not have fallen, maybe fall will have finished by this time, but uh, based on looking at the year three months at a time, it was the third quarter in my mind. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Chair, my, my, my purpose was not to embarrass anybody, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's important that if we're going to go to this trouble of setting dates for particular items, that we follow through and make sure they're discussed in time. Point well taken, Councillor Saunders. Councillor, what's your name again? Yeah. I'm okay to remove the recreation assets. Sure, I brought that forward in consent tonight. She said it's going to come forward in next year, so I'm fine to remove No point in leaving here for a year. Right. Okay. If everyone else says okay. We're good with that? Okay. And then the balance, a mover and a seconder. Mover, Councillor Rawson. Seconder, Councillor Saunders. All in favor? Questions are come from the media or the public? No, then back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll move on to um, agenda item number eight, section D, finance and corporate services. And I'll turn the chair over to the deputy mayor, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, our first is a consent agenda. We have two items. First one, tax exemption portion of remuneration paid to local councils. And we, the other one is a letter of commitment to the SSS Climate Adoption Partner Grants. Does anyone wish uh, to pull any of these uh, two issues? I was certainly interested in number one. I wonder if uh, anyone has some clarification or if people would uh, like to support the correspondence that has come from other municipalities. I didn't realize, I, I saw that for the first time this, when I read my agenda. So it's uh, something that I guess we as uh, political people have enjoyed over the years. So I don't know, Sherry, or Carrie, would you like to comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is correspondence received uh, for your information um, put on the consent agenda. Um, it related to the one-third tax exemption that all municipal councillors do enjoy and have for many, many years. Um, I'm not quite sh uh, positive which piece of legislation, um, if it falls under the, the many changes uh, identified under Bill uh, 68 that are being proposed um, through the Liberal government right now, but the proposed, um, uh, the end result is going to be that the one-third um, of councillors' remuneration will not be tax-exempt in the future. And that's federal, is it not? No, it's not provincial, it's federal, because it's taxation. I know there was I comment. believe it's provincial, but I... Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't oh, know. Uh, uh, correct. Sorry. Correct. It is federal. Right. So you're it's under the Trudeau liberal, Trudeau yeah. liberal government. So you are keeping an eye on it. If there is an opportunity for us to oppose, we can, may get that in the future. Sure. I'll, fo okay, I'll follow comments? up on that. Yes, Your Worship. We could put a motion forward. A lot of municipalities have yeah. saying, listen, it's uh, this is not a, a, a path we should be undertaking the uh, uh, to entice people to come into uh, to politics and to uh, uh, give their time and the remuneration is fairly uh, modest in, in most municipalities across uh, across Canada, especially small town uh, rural Canadian municipalities. So uh, there's a lot of municipalities, and I think AMO and the FCM are actually uh, moving forward to uh, bring forward uh, an opinion that th they shouldn't uh, touch that in, in light of the uh, benefit it does provide in attracting uh, people to the position. And a lot of things, uh, you know, they come. 
covers off some things like parking fee, other things that people don't end up, you know, nickel and diming uh, are their citizens for. So, for instance, when you're traveling around, when I'm traveling around from here to Tate Township or to, to uh, you know, Victoria Harbor or to Midland or to Tiny Township, I don't we don't put mileage in. I don't think anybody here does that, and because it, it affords that kind of luxury. So, uh, you, you know, otherwise, it just people will find a way just to. Uh, um, you know, um, recover some of their costs that, that are lost, but more importantly, it could uh, it could impact the number of people that are actually willing to sit at these tables across the, across Canada. So we could put a motion forward, or but I would say the big voices are already at the table, uh, uh, you know, bringing it up on, uh, under the opinion that it shouldn't go. So uh, I'm good with the motion. Or I'm good just to receive for information. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Levy. Uh, I'd like to suggest that we put forward a motion. I'd like to move that we send a letter. Um, uh, in opposition, uh, whether it's to support uh, AMO or FCM, what is it? F FCM, yeah. FCM um, that if they're going to fight this for us, they need to be able to say we've got 400 municipalities or whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would move that we uh, voice our opposition to eliminating the one third uh, tax free remuneration for councillors. Thank you. Um, I think Councillor LaRue, you. Well, I, I just want to make a comment, uh, Madam Sorry. Deputy Mayor, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I certainly agree with His Worship and Councillor Levy, that was especially when you consider what portion uh, federal MPs are ex tax exempt from. <laughs> okay, thank you for those comments. Councillor Levy, you'll put forward a motion. You moved it, and seconder. You never look to your right, Madam oh, Chair. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, Warner, <laughs> we find that a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, Madam Chair, I was just going to suggest that in the uh, in the letter uh, in our agenda package from Lake of Bays, uh, it would be very easy to parrot their exact wording and just substitute penetrating machine and our uh, own local uh, municipal officials to make, make it easier for our secretary to do that. Drafted. Great idea, Councillor Saunders. Thank you so much. So I do have a mover and a seconder. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay, we move on to matters for consideration. I guess, Councillor Saunders, I would ask you to thank you. This is uh, <laughs> uh, a recommended action is that the amended tax and utility bill insert policy be approved as presented. Discuss, could I have a mover and a seconder to get it on the floor? Moved by Councillor Mayotte, seconded by His Worship. Discussion. I think this has been brought for us to rectify a wrong that's been around for a few years, so very glad to see that. I don't think we need discussion. So all those in favor? Carried. Unanimously, I may a comment. Might add, Mr. Deputy Lover, Chair, Councilor that Lover. we actually didn't accept the letter of com uh, commitment from the SSS for the SSS for the Climate Adaptive Partner Grants. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, so we finished with our first matters of consideration. We will go back to uh, consent agenda, second item, letter of commitment to SSS Climate Adoption Partner Grants. Do I have a mover? Councilor Lauder, seconder. Councillor Rawson, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Our second item under matters of consideration, a request for a reduction in the large water consumption charge. The recommended action is that the request for a reduction of a large water consumption charge be approved in the amount of $412.73. Do I have a mover to bring this forward? Councillor Saunders, seconded by Councillor Levy. Discussion, questions? I think the report uh, lays out what happened. So I will call for the vote if there's no discussion. All those in favor? Carried. Referrals to upcoming finance and corporate services section. And I'm asking that we endorse the following items. Community engagement initiatives. Land sale policy review, smoking policy on parks and town property, and some discussion on election 2018. Uh, finance composite fee schedule comparison, and finance insurance joint RFP review. All those in favor? 
I don't know if I asked for a mover and a second or a uh, Councillor LaRose and Councillor Saunders. Very good. Okay. All those in favor, carry. Question period from the media? No? All right. We ask for adjournment. All those in favor, carry. Oh God, when it comes when it comes to <laughs> Technically. Yes, but technically, that's right. Oh, when it comes to the finance.